Welcome back, guys. This is going to be another episode of Mita Unshackled uh, with your host, Ari Munoz and Rita Valenzuela. We're here with uh, Pip Hortic- Horticulture. How to horticulture? Horticulture. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got Leaf and Michael here with us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your company and what you guys do? Give us a rundown and a story, too. Yeah, we're the uh, leading provider of vertical... Uh, mobile storage solutions in the cannabis space. Um, so we focus on multi-tiered vertical cultivation platforms, and we have solutions for really every stage of the plant from mother, clone, veg, flower rooms, drying rooms, curing rooms. We also do quite a bit in retail. So okay. if people are coming up short on space in any one of those aspects, um, we're able to remedy those solutions by creating more space by not just maximizing the square foot of the room, but also the cubic footprint of the room. So we we focus on storing, whether it's stories. plants or finished product, uh, vertically or in multiple tiers. That's awesome. Honestly, I went to a grow, like, not too long ago, and it was my first, like, second story grow or whatever. I got to climb that little ladder with the little platform there. I think it's the coolest thing. I'm like, hell yeah. People just up here. We create space. So in a typical single-tier environment, um, let's say you had a 1,000 square foot room, you're going to get about 700 square feet of canopy, and that's what gets you paid is your canopy. In a double stack room, we're doubling that 700 square feet, so you're getting 1,400 square feet of canopy in a 1,000 square foot room. So we're literally creating space. If we go to a triple stack, you're getting 2,100 square feet of canopy in a 1,000 square foot room. Mm. So we create space, and therefore we create revenue opportunities for yeah. people in this space. That's awesome. Increase your profits. Um, so do you guys just make like the actual like manufacturing of like the pole system itself or like everything from like pots and all we are made in the usa based out of grand rapids michigan um we have a another facility in tennessee but yeah everything is engineered designed um and fabricated in-house and um so we we primarily make the racking system at pip but through uh, one of our most recent acquisitions ggs we actually have capabilities to provide all the systems uh full greenhouse build out and all the components that that go within that so we're constantly uh, evolving and, and, and adding more products on, but we are 100% manufactured in the USA, and we, we build everything there that we make. Nice. You want to scoot in a little bit? Yeah. Um, How did both of you guys get started? Each of you, Leaf, starting with you. How uh, much time you got? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm personally, I'm second generation in the space. Um, I got started in the legal space about 13 years ago. Um, just saw an opportunity to elevate the medical program in Colorado, provide opportunities for women, seniors, and just really a comfortable setting for, for people to, to get cannabis. At the time, it was pretty pretty shady experience. I got my medical card. was really disappointed in a lot of lackluster experiences that I had and said, man, I'm getting better product. I'm growing better product. Um, and, and if my wife went to a store, if my mom went to a store, what, what would I want for her? Yeah. And, yeah. and back in 2008, that's the model that we, we like, stuck out to, to create. And we started Kind Love. Um, kind Love. Kind Love is... Uh, for, for many, many years and still around today, but for many, many years was, was recognized as one of the top operations. Um, most importantly, one of the most medically focused operations. We dealt with a lot of sick children, a lot of people with terminal illness, end of life issues. So um, really feel blessed to have the opportunity to serve those people and, and develop relationships and uh, just make an impact in their lives while, while being able to feed our family. So it's really wild ride. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's how we got started in, in, in starting this, look, looking for an opportunity to to improve the the whole experience of, of going and buying cannabis, improve the medical experience of cannabis. So When we met 13 years ago, we were just disgruntled patients who said this can be so much better and saw that there wasn't that advancement in the space. We saw a clear path to being some of that catalyst that could help make some of this change. And like Leaf said, we, we saw women, seniors, and the sick as underserved markets. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was where we focused on. Very inspirational. 
So is that kind of like an association? Was it actually like in a dispensary? It was a licensed facility. So we had um, we had cultivation in a warehouse back in 2009, which is kind of early for a lot of people um, because there were still caregiver and home grow options available mm-hmm. in Denver. Um, but we started really as a retail center. Um, then vertical integration laws came in, and we were the first in the country to go through vertical integration. And most people saw that as a negative. They were like, oh, how can I afford to – I need so much money to build a grow facility. Oh, I've got to do extraction as well. Now I've got to do an infusion for kitchen. Um, We saw that vertical integration as a blessing because we were frustrated with the supply chain, not having complete transparency in the products from some of the vendors like home growers and Mm -hmm. things like that. Not to say they weren't growing bad product, but there wasn't lab testing. We just didn't know. And if you're going to focus on women, seniors, and the sick, and this is a medical day, so really talking about it as medicine that's going to help someone, we needed to be confident that there wasn't any kind of um, potentially like harmful pesticides or uh, anything that could possibly compromise and make someone more sick. Mm -hmm. And so um, that makes sense. Yeah, that was, that was really our focus. Uh, But we ended up um, all said and done at 90,000 square feet of indoor production. Um, We had volatile extraction lab. Did we do solventless back then? We did not do solventless. We did through Fred. Oh, through Fred, you're right. Yeah, we definitely did. Yeah, so, we did. I mean, we were really early on. We also saw that edibles had a lot of room for improvement in terms of its packaging. Most importantly, a lot of stuff was uh, labeled as sativa, hybrid, or indica, and that just wasn't good enough for us. Mm-hmm. So we, circa 2011 and 12, we actually had strain-specific edibles. So nice. if you're like, I want sour D, but I don't smoke, um, or I only smoke hash, well, here we've got sour D and, you know, 18 different versions of, uh, concentrate for you. Oh, I like the sour D smell, but I don't smoke at all. No problem. I have a sour D cookie for you. Oh, I'm sugar free. No problem. We have a sour D sugar free lozenger for you. Customizable. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And we were we wanted people were frustrated. They're like, oh, I tried this hybrid or this sativa, which are kind of dirty words these days. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I didn't have the same experience. So we were really trying to replicate experience and consistency, which is probably one of the hardest challenges in the cannabis space even to this day. Do you have data of all of that? Of course, yeah, we went through um, all the seed to sale tracking stuff, plus of all our, our own internal data. And we were, were big advocates of making data driven decisions, uh, both as operators, but also as pit horticulture. We're constantly listening to our growers, um, interacting with them, trying to understand pain points. We get a lot of compliments, and that's very nice, but we're really interested in the constructive criticism because those are things that we can make better for our awesome. clients and for future clients. That's awesome. So how did you guys get together to start um, PIP? Or how did, when did you guys start working for them? And what do you guys do for the company? Yeah. Um, so when we were building out the 90,000 square foot indoor facility for Kind Love, um, I wasn't happy with a lot of the traditional trays and um, cultivation platforms that are on the market. So we ended up customizing a solution. We had no intentions of ever selling that solution. We did something for ourselves. Yeah. And... We had a few different growers come through that were kind of competitors of ours, but like frenemies, if Mm -hmm. you will. Um, We like competition. We think it's uh, (laughs) it's where innovation is born. Keep your friends close, Um, but your enemies closer. Yeah, we like to say cooperation. Cooperation. Yeah, and so after the third grower came through and was like, man, these racks and these trays are beautiful, and they make so much sense. Uh, How do I buy them? And I was like, they're not for sale. But by the third third grower, we were like, oh, you know, we've got something here. Um, so it's focused as we were on 90,000 square feet of cultivation back then, which is a very large facility back in that. It's still respectable today. Uh, but back then, that was a that was 100% of our focus. And now all of a sudden, here comes this other thing <laughs> that wants to be its own company and be born. Um, and we were at least smart enough to say, you know what, there's something here. Let's not ignore this. Um, so but Greenhouse Industries was born. And um, Essentially, we were our first customer, if that makes sense, <laughs> uh, which is weird to think about it that oh, way. No, but right um, yeah, Greenhouse Industries, um, we've been coming to these trade shows for nine Since years. Since 2004, yeah. 2005. Oh. A long time. So we watched the industry really evolve. Um, PIP came to us uh, as they were exploring new revenue channels where their equipment could be beneficial and uh, they had enough insight to go to a cannabis trade show, probably with very low expectations, I would imagine. Um, and then came across our booth and they were so excited. They were more, they were the most excited people that I've ever met that came to our booth <laughs> because they were connecting More dots. excited than us? I don't know. You guys, uh, you guys go pretty close. good. Close. <laughs> but they, what they saw was the future. They saw that 
maybe there's an opportunity to merge this team and this technology with our existing equipment. Um, it didn't quite work out at, as seamlessly as this existing equipment. There was a lot of modifications that they had to make to meet the um, demanding environment of cultivation. Um, but long story short, um, we sold our company to PIP. And uh, if I had to do it all over again today, I would do the same decision. We had some options at that time. It's kind of like when you're single and you don't can't get a, a date and you're <laughs> like, what's wrong? And then you end up dating someone and get a girlfriend or boyfriend. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> Everybody wants to date you all at uh-huh. once, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like that a little bit. All of a sudden, their competition was had gotten wind that hey, we're talking to these guys, and they were like, hey, don't do it, don't sign anything, come talk to us. So yeah. we kind of talked to the quote unquote competition, but it was really clear that Pip, um, most importantly for me as a cultivator, they weren't shy about cannabis. A lot of the other people, you couldn't see cannabis on their website. It was like a hidden thing. It was like a black eye, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, <laughs> the sty. Yeah, it was, it was it was an eyesore for them. It was like a secret. Like they wanted the money, but they didn't want to support the industry. Where Pip was like, no, we're going to have a brand new division. We're going to have dedicated website. Like we fully embrace this. Mm-hmm. And that was really important to me as an operator. I mean, I mean Pip embarked on a basically like a two-year informational study of saying, where can we deploy our technology? Pip has been around for nearly 50 years. Wow. Um, really industry leader in storage, back of the house retail serving customers like Amazon, Walmart, Automart, Abercrombie and nice. Fitch, anything, all the behind the thing, all, all the things that you don't see in retail. Right. Um, so they, they've been around for a long time. They're used to, to performing at a really high level, servicing a really high level of, of customer, but said, hey, we got this technology. Where can we deploy it? And uh, came across cannabis. And, and part of that that journey was was meeting us, and, and we really helped um, – help them move really fast in this space and get ahead of the competition. You know, to this day, we've got about a thousand installations uh, worldwide. Nice. Um, and, and none of our competition, uh, it, what, what I call competition is, is anywhere close to that. I think our biggest composi- competition still to this day is, uh, is single level farming and, and getting people to understand um, that you can really grow fire cannabis under, under LEDs and, and vertical grow environments. Uh, you got to do it differently, but it, it can be done. So um, I, st- I still think we're still, to this day, really being advocates for vertical farming, advocates for LED lighting, and um, just uh, continue to, to show people different ways to do this. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's crazy how you say that you guys started in retail or Pip started in retail. Yeah. I'm just thinking about it. Now I used to work at a retail store. Uh, Vans was like one of my first jobs. And now that I think about it in the back, they do have like There's probably a 75% chance that that was on a Pip rack. I so was, like, yeah, I was literally crazy. thinking yeah. Nike. I worked at Nike for Oh, Nike's year. a big yeah. client of ours. Yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely got the Pip rack. To put the shoes. Yep. Shoes so when they're like, hey, I got to go check in the back for your size. They slide there, the there's racks. There's a good sure. probability chance it's on a It makes sense because, yeah, they look almost exactly like the racks that you would have in your grows that just slide on down. Yeah. It makes make some modifications because yeah. the weight loads are different and there's a lot more humidity. So there's there's a lot of minor details that the average person probably wouldn't take into consideration. But I think that's something that PIP does really well is they kind of take the deep dive and, and make sure that, as an example, there's certain components of the system that are stainless so that they don't rust or oxidize. I was just going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got members on our team that are pretty much day in, day out in grows and are providing feedback that's internal, and then we, we reach out to a lot of our customers and really solicit this feedback, good, good, bad, and otherwise, because we want to know what's going on. We want to know how to improve. It's, it's this Kaizen model of constantly improving. It's, it's a rack, but there, there's a lot that goes on. There's a lot of components that our engineering team are constantly evolving, constantly making better. So there's a lot of that going on behind the scenes that, that most people wouldn't even recognize yeah. from, from show to show, from iteration to iteration. But we're, we definitely have that constant improvement model. Makes sense. So are they all one color? Is it just like a standard rack? Like stainless. Oh, the, uh, yeah, uh, the color stuff, you know, we were probably one of the first to actually do that, but um, it's kind of the all white everything kind of mentality. All but, white um, you know, clean. elevating the look of things. What the important parts of the paint itself and the coating is that um, it has an anti a fungal and antibacterial component to it. So to we're always point. looking to reduce risk for people. Um, so we don't just do something to make it look pretty, which we appreciate that too, but it also has function as well. So does the white help like with the plants? Like if you have the LEDs there, does it like reflect off the poles or anything it like makes that? No difference. I'm sure there's some 
minute gain there that could be measured by somebody that's not myself. But um, <laughs> you know, the, the, I think one of the best things about white thing. for anybody or as a cultivator is if it's dirty, yeah. you can see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So white really helps you when you're whether you're keeping up with daily sanitation or um, like an extreme sanitation after, let's say, a flowering cycle, you you have a much better visual aid at what's what is actually clean. Yeah. Our original trays were orange. We just, you know, we we're a new company. Neon orange. We, we, That's right. We wanted to be seen. Hell yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so really loud and bright. But uh, we moved to white. It was cleaner. It's just more sterile. It was the the grows that were looking at our systems were high end. They wanted to be sterile. They wanted to they wanted to show it off. So white white just gave it a nice clean look. Nice. That yeah. makes sense. Super yeah. cool. Well, do you guys have any like uh, closing what? statements, yeah. um, exciting stories, maybe like hardships you've shared through your time that we can Oof. help people <laughs> so overcome, many. inspire so people? Many. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Leaf and I were disgruntled patients. That's how we started. We have different backgrounds. Um, we love the plant, still do. Um, we're still disgruntled patients. We see that the retail <laughs> experience is lacking. We see that quality of flower from state to state is all over the place, and so. I think the exciting things for people are we got in a bit earlier where it's a little bit more friendly to play, where now it's a lot more cost prohibited to play. But at the same time, we were regular people who saw an opportunity to improve things and we went for it. A lot of people have a lot of great ideas, but they're too afraid to lay it all on the line and go for it. And we've done that a few different times over the last 13 years. And um, we've been fortunate to have some successful endeavors through that. We've also had some fails, you know, yeah, um, but when you journey. fail, um, you know, you're right on the brink of something really special. And so yeah, as long as you're not a quitter, it's okay to fail. It's not okay yeah. to quit. Um, and so Keep I think, pushing. you know, that's a mentality and you An know, opportunist. I wouldn't have been able to do everything by myself and nor would he. So I think it's really about building a team around you that has strengths where you're weak, um, working with people that, accept and want constructive criticism it's really easy to say Very that important. it's yeah. really difficult to hear it for a lot of people <laughs> yeah um but yeah reflect you know on it. you have to you got to jump in too you can't just like put a toe in you've got to full fully commit mm-hmm. you know for me um i try and run my life and my business by more or less like two launches 99 isn't 100 and and that's like so important for our industry when it comes to compliance when it comes to Putting out a product is, is there's these like minute, like 1% things that can ruin your whole operation that could get your, your operation shut down. That could, that could result in your cannabis being, uh, you know, not passing testing. So, you know, 99, 99 is not a hundred. If you're going to do something, do it a hundred percent. And, and then it goes into what I, what I call is like DITV is do it the best. And no matter what you're doing, if you're, if you're scrubbing the floor, if you're, if you're cooking a hot dog, like do it with, you know, Seek to do it as, as best. Seek to make improvements. Um, just give it your all, and yeah. and people will notice that. Like I, I notice people that you know a janitor or somebody like just giving it all. It's like man, that like I, I appreciate yeah. that. Like yeah. so that just that attitude. No matter what it is, um, and people will will recognize whatever you're doing. Just put put your heart and soul in. Can't teach can't teach passion, but people recognize that real quick. And, yeah, and it's definitely that. noticeable. Yeah, it takes it takes people a long way. And we've we've given tons of people opportunities like. Guys that started as trimmers are now COOs of, of major companies. That's oh. awesome. Yeah, guys that started as bud tenders are like, I mean, you, you name it. We, we've provided so many stepping stones. And that's That's been the most exciting thing for me as much as helping the people out is providing these opportunities for a lot of the people that, that have worked for us, that have supported us. Um, some of them come back. Some of them have gone to do, do just huge things. So just uh, providing opportunities for, for people has been just amazing as well. That's awesome. We definitely it's need more people like yeah. you in the world. Everybody wants to like keep things in and not yeah. share the love. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Bob Marley, one love. We all got to be together. Yeah. The more you give, the more you get back. Right? Exactly. And, that's, um, and there, there's, we, we, I mean, together we've toured probably a thousand facilities and oh. there, there's no, there's not, there's not much secret sauce. So, <laughs> so many people are like, we, we got all this, this secret IP and all this we, we don't want to see what, what we're doing mm-hmm. and the competition might find out. Yeah. And, don't see our pipes. Um, it, it, <laughs> people, pe- people are primarily using the same equipment, doing the same things. But yeah. the ones that are succeeding are the ones that are doing it day in, day out, bringing passion to it, um, doing it, doing it for more than just the money. So Want some love into the plant, accepting yeah. constructive criticism. Yeah. yeah, don't get too comfortable. Keep <laughs> light feet. You got to be really flexible in this space to be successful. You can't get too fixed on an idea um, because things change and shift really quickly, and you've got to be able to shift with it. Makes sense. 
It was great having you guys. Thank yeah. you guys for teaching yeah. us some stuff and telling us your story. It was definitely yeah. a journey. I learned some new stuff. Um, I want to tell everybody, reach out to Pip if you guys need anything in your cultivations. Um, what's the best website for people to reach out to? Hiphorticulture.com, Instagram, all that fun stuff. We're your pretty email? we're pretty easy to find. Yeah. If you yeah. just Pip Horticulture. Yep. Greenhouse Farmer. Greenhouse Farmer. Look them up. Yeah. You guys did amazing. It was a pleasure having you. You guys are very inspiring. I love your story. Oh, thanks for yeah. Yeah, thanks yeah, for taking the time with us. Appreciate the opportunity. It. And until next time, thank you guys for tuning in to Mita Unshackled.